Hey, it's me, GV, and welcome back to Black Myth Wukong, our blindfold playthrough, walkthrough, thingamajig, whatever you want to call it. Uh, glad to see so many people liking the series at the time of this video. I think episode 3 just went up at the time of me recording this episode, which is episode 7. Uh, yeah, man. I mean, I really think my talents are best used with new games, you know? New experiences. We've done a lot of retreading on this YouTube channel. A lot of stuff I've done many times in the past. I kind of convince myself like, oh, I'm gonna love it just as much as the previous time. And I kind of do at the start of each of those series. But then as we get deeper and deeper and deeper in and experience the things that I've experienced in the past already, it really makes me want to cover stuff like this, you know? New releases that I get excited about. So, glad to see people resonating with that because that definitely feels like what is right in my soul to produce in terms of content. So, welcome back. Uh, friendly reminder, I do have a Patreon. If you'd like to go, go, to go the extra mile and support, you can do so. The link is in the description below. Big thank you to my patrons. Uh, and also, yeah, comment question of the day comes from, once again, Nananya15, who asks, if I was a mythological creature, what would I want to be? And I ask that same question to you, uh, my audience. What mythological creature would you want to be? Let me know, and I'll think about my answer as we go through this episode. Now, we are on Chapter 2, Yellow Sands, Desolate Something, uh, something like that. And we have a new spark. So I'm going to put the priority... Uh, oh, alteration. What is this? The Elder Scrolls? Talked about Elder Scrolls earlier. Uh, alter... Oh, yeah. Okay. Wait. Oh. So there's just... Oh, I see. Yeah, when we unlock transformations, I thought that was just um, like a whole tree for different transformations that would be able to turn into different things. But no, it seems like each of these up here are for different spells. We have the immobilized spell, the alteration spell. There's one more spell that goes on uh, the X and then transformations. But it says transformations. The damage of the next attack after a perfect dodge view transformation. Red tides. Yeah, I'm a little confused. I'm like... It sounds like there's multiple transformations. I don't know. I guess we'll figure it out. But anyways, yeah, we have alteration now. Uh, cloud step active 35 sec. Wow, that lasts forever. Over half of a minute. Mobility spell that leaves behind. Okay, what do we unlock with this? Moderately increases movement speed. Ooh, I like that. Uh, considerably increases the maximum health of the decoy. Wait, what? There's a decoy? Did I not realize there was a decoy? I don't think I knew that that was a thing. Uh, concealed observation slightly increases the critical hit chance of unveiling strike, which stacks per second while in cloud step. Ooh. So you cloud step, then you wait 10 seconds, then you do like a big critical hit. Very interesting. Very interesting. And we cannot get any of these from mobilize. Immobilize definitely seems incredibly, incredibly like powerful. So I think we'll stick with that. We can also take thrust stance. I kind of want to max out pillar stance because, again, we've invested so many points into it. However... And I guess it would be good to also take these smash stance uh, sparks back, but... Yeah, whatever. Okay, what's this do? Each chat level slightly increases the charging speed. I'm not really charging a lot. I'm just attacking, building up the fury meter, and then using it. I'm not really charging my ability, especially with the uh, pillar stance. So maybe we do this. Each talent increases damage dealt by varied combos. Yeah, maybe we do this and we go for um, the gale strike more so because i'm assuming that counts as a varied combo i don't really know though and now we have these relics uh which this i am unaware what this is so what is the re yeah we got the the bird relic which we saw in the intro cutscene wukong turned into so what does this do craving eyes a glimpse reveals the foe's might can i take this how does this work uh a glimpse reveals the foe's might a talent tilts to an unfair fight identifies the Yao Guais that bear spirits opportune watcher considerably increases the focus gained upon consecutive successful light attack hits that is huge do I just get that oh you choose one yeah that I mean that's really big uh eagle eye upon a successful hit with unveiling strike the cooldown of this spell is massively reduced also interesting kind of hit and run tactics keen insight considerably increases critical hit damage i don't know how good the crits are i'm i mean opportune watcher 
definitely seems to be the thing for me, you know? Uh, now, can we... S how does this work? Do you only get one and you can't change them? Huh. I I'm assuming there's some way to respect that. And then we have, like, yeah, four other slots for relics. So we know there's probably at least four other, you know, major bosses and then one final big one for the middle, maybe? If that's how that works... Um, it says that I have a new weapon. Ooh, wind bear staff, which we would have to craft at a black. Oh, it says or blacksmith. Interesting. So it looks like we'll get a blacksmith. And then we've got the wolf assassin, which we already looked at. And then let's go to inventory where we have something over here. Uh, looks like just new. Oh, the awakened wine worm. Where the heck do we get that? Okay. Yeah. Some new materials. Flame ebon gold special crafting material as well and then the journal cool beans all right yeah really like this game you know i've heard a little bit of discourse at this point on the internet uh about how people are feeling about it uh it's interesting a lot of people seem to love this game and think it is deserving of the praise oh my god more projectiles the praise and the hype um while other people are seemingly thinking that it is overrated and i can see a little bit of both sides um i think the interesting thing to me is that yeah i've heard it's kind of like a boss rush and it really is kind of like that it's true you know no you don't okay so yeah now our light attack damage is really high what is this guy he looks like a shrew or something are we breaking his shield also? Oh, yeah, we broke his... Ooh. Yeah, looks like a new mechanic, a stagger mechanic or something. Or, um, like a... Uh, uh, what am I trying to say? Like, it I think he had another bar there, basically, where it was showing, like, you know, if we break his shield, it collapses. Oh, he's a rat. A rat soldier and a rat archer. Yeah, they would be rats. <laughs> Actually, I love rats. I've had a lot of rats as pets, but, you know, in the typical colloquial ideation is that a word of rats usually not uh, looked fondly upon okay i want to explore over there so i'm gonna go try to kill those rat archers which i guess we have come across before since we have the portrait of them already right but uh yeah it is interesting that this game is much more of a um boss rush than you would think in a lot of ways it is a boss rush it's true you know okay i'm gonna do one of these bam they just can't stand the pillar. The mighty might of my mighty pillar. It's so large. Definitely not overcompensating for anything. It's just really large. What can I say? Boop. Okay, yeah. Jump attacks are kind of weird in this. Not sure. Okay. Okay. Yeah, looks like there's no fall damage in this game, which is fine with me. I'm honestly fine with games that have no fall damage. Um, when it makes sense, I just... Fall damage is so freaking annoying, man. Like, honestly, especially games where they massively overtune how much damage you take from fall damage. Really annoying. Uh, okay. But yes, what I was talking about was, uh, yeah, so I've, I've heard it compared to, like, a boss rush. And with the amount of bosses I've seen that this game has and with the frequency of the bosses, yeah, it does kind of feel like that. It kind of feels like Cuphead to me where it's, like, going into it. I was like, oh, it's going to be, like, a kind of adventure game with maybe some bosses near the end of it or whatever. Uh, but then it's like, oh, no, this is just straight up like a boss rush game. Which, you know, I don't think is necessarily a bad thing. Um, it is interesting for this game particularly because... Oh, yeah, I thought there was something... Oh, no, I, we were over there. Never mind. Licorice. Wait, what? Is that where you get licorice from? Is that the same thing as licorice? I'm confused. Okay, uh, yeah, what do we got up here? Some sort of shrine or something. What can we do here? Pick up... What is that? Lamb brew? It's a drink. Okay, so yeah, again, drinks kind of change up how uh, when we use our healing gourd, like with the effect that it does. So it'd be interesting if like you could use it to just flat out not heal, maybe just buff your attack or something. Because there's also like, you know, augments, modifiers, whatever that change the effects to. Uh, but anyways, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm fine with the boss rush. I definitely expected this game to be more so of a typical game in this genre where, you know, it's a lot of exploration. You're picking up, like, unique items and weapons and things like that. And then eventually, you know, you see a mini boss. Maybe eventually you see, like, a major boss. 
But no, there's just boss after boss after boss. So if that's not your thing, I could definitely see people, you know, getting upset about that. Or, you know, just not having that not be their thing, basically. What is this? Hello? Oh, it's a little frog man again. Why does it seem like we're getting HP back? Oh my god, I forgot about the freaking poison explosion. Why does it seem like we're getting HP back? Because every time we hit him, it's like the little pink, uh, you know, mist comes out. As if we are, we are healing a bit. I don't know. I, I don't think we are. Because I don't think my HP is rapidly improving at any point. Uh, another frog, man. I'll give you the staff. Bam! And then you can have that as well. Now, that should have healed us a little bit because we used a fury point. But, uh, yeah, when we're not using a fury point... It should not be healing me, even though it seems to have the same effect. I don't know. Uh, but anyways, yeah, I mean, I'm really liking this game. I think the environments are very pretty. It is interesting, though, how, yeah, it is more so of a... Seeing a boss every two seconds sort of game. Which is pretty crazy, because, like, you know, they have to program all that, obviously. I mean, that's gonna take a lot of time and effort. Okay, let's whack this guy. Because, yeah, I think they could have gotten away with, um... Simply making environments and then having like some sort of mini boss or unique enemy and then leading up to a big cinematic fight or maybe I don't know three boss fights leading up to the uh, The relic holder or whatever you want to call them. hi yeah. So yeah jump attacks are probably really good for finishing off these people. What is this guy? Whoa, okay. He's got whoa. He's got a lightning blast Cool. I think I'm going to give him the spirit blast. Bam! Oh, yeah. That's so satisfying. And then I'll give you one of these. Bam! And then I'll give you one of these. Bobbity, 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 bobbity. What is this dude? What is what is he? A rat governor. Okay. We've found the... What's that word? The gub gubernatorial leader of this area. Okay. So this is the, the land of the rats. Kind of like the uh, the other one was the land of the uh, the, the wolves, right? Alrighty then, I'm trying not to miss anything either, which could be a little overwhelming given how expansive some of these areas seem to be. But I think we got everything back there, then we can continue up the river, or continue up that path, or continue up this path on the left here. Yeah, I don't know. I just try to follow my gamer senses and try to find the optional things first, which, I, which right now is telling me maybe this way? It's very hard to tell. But yeah, let's go this way. Uh, and yeah, what mythological creature would I want? Oh, okay. So we got that that shining grace, whatever you want to call it, leading that way. So that means that's where we have to go, right? So let's go down this way first. Uh, what mythological? I mean, the thing that immediately pops into my head is Sagittarius, because I am a Sagittarius. Wait, are they called Sagittarius? Wait. No, like a centaur, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, the things from Harry Potter, or mythology in general. I mean, that's the thing that immediately pops into my head, because, you know, they're kind of cool. They're, they're an archer, they've got half horse, half human, uh, they're imposing, intimidating, kind of cool. They've got some, uh, skill with the archery. I mean, that's what I would want to say, I guess, because it fits with my astrological sign of being a, oh, we got another frog boss, it looks like. Okay, can we get down? Can we just jump down there? Seems like it. Uh, you know, astrological sign, that, that would be mine, so... Yeah, I mean, that's the thing that pops into my head, but I'm trying to think of other stuff. I mean, a lot of them are feminine, obviously, which I would say no. I enjoy my masculinity. Wouldn't want to pick anything feminine, like some sort of siren or gorgon or... You know, anything like that. So I'm trying to think of, like, the male or the masculine mythological creatures. All right, well... If we can jump down there, uh, we better get ready here. So we got to use a mobilize. We can also use the veil. What does the veil do again? I feel like it does stuff that I don't really need it to do. What does this do? For short duration, burn immunity. Gra oh, gradually increasing focus. Okay. Yeah, very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not bad. All right. Can we jump down here? Yep. It looks like it. All right. So I'm going to click in. You're bad, right? Yes. Okay. And immediately... You're gonna just back kick me. Okay, hold on. I'm trying to use my freaking veil. Okay, I literally cannot get this veil off. All right, well, now you've done done it, buddy boy. All right, at wow, he is not even... Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. 
Oh, Jesus Christ. I, can't, I literally cannot get this veil off. He is just going and going and going. I can't do anything. All right, heal up. All right, let's uh, refocus here. Okay, dodge that. Nice. Gonna dodge that and then gonna go up and bam. I'm gonna turn into the misstep or whatever. Do an empowered hit. Okay, is that an AoE? He's shocking the water. Drink, 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 drink. Good. Okay, transform. What is he doing? Whoa, all right. And then let's do a dash. Cool, looks like we went through his attack there. Okay, getting hit too much with the might or whatever it's called. Yeah, this is a sloppy fight here. Come on, one more hit, one more hit. God, attacking with this transformation is the most bizarre thing, I swear to God. Okay, we got that big hit off, good. And then our, uh, our immobilize is coming up as well. All right, let's buy some time here. Gonna rush in, hit him a whole bunch here. Okay, we're gonna dodge the tongue. There's the immobilize, wait for him to attack. That looks good. Okay, we want that last piece of focus. Nice, get up on the staff. Bam, beautiful, and boom. Piece of crap, evil repelling medicament. Formulas, tadpole, materials. What else we got? Anything? Is that it? Uh, portraits updated. Yeah, what was that guy? Same thing as the frog guy. Long, long, uh, okay. Ba, li, gu, log, and then long, li, gu, ba. Wait, is this just, it's just backwards? Log, li, kind of. It's like remixed, basically, his name from the first guy. Okay, that, by the way, is how you do these types of repeat bosses. I love when games do this. Like, you have... Okay, I think it's fine to have the same guy, you know, as the other frog guy. But you have to give him something new. So this guy had a lot of new, like, lightning abilities. Very cool. I like that a lot. That's uh, a cool thing to do. Okay, can we go this way? It's kind of hard to tell where you can actually... Wow, yeah, you can. Huh. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's kind of hard to tell where you can go to in this game a little bit. What is the a meditation point? Sweet. I will take it. Yeah, a little tough fight there. Once again, it just seems like this game, a lot of the time, you can kind of just get through based on your damage and abilities alone. You don't really need to learn the movesets as long as you're being aggressive and utilizing your magic. I mean, you, you just seem really powerful. So I would not be surprised if they definitely nerfed some of that. But I don't know, what the heck is that? Some giant tornado in the distance. Beetlejuice scenario happening. Uh, but yeah, you know, as long as we're using Immobilize and... Yeah, I, if we can switch that transformation out, I really need to do that. Uh, because that transformation, I cannot describe how bizarre attacking with it feels. It just feels like you're, first of all, hitting with a pool noodle. But second, second of all, like, literally hitting with a pool noodle where, like, the noodles just flailing around constantly and it's hard to like actually feel if you're landing attacks you know uh what is this hello <laughs> you come at a good moment one of my formulas was swallowed by a petty frog stay and help a deity like myself will not short you <laughs> No way this guy is a deity, right? Also, yeah. Oh, I forgot to go back to that one guy in Chapter 1. I don't know if there was anything else with him. People were saying uh, there is actually a thing with the waterfall, but you can't access it yet. I'm really curious when I, when I mentioned, like, you know, oh, this waterfall doesn't have a secret. Apparently, there is something there. But, yeah, this is some, we, we need to come back to it later. Oh, how wondrous. <laughs> you go <laughs> Man follows earth, earth follows sky, sky follows Tao, Tao follows nature. <laughs> These common pills, <laughs> I grant you. Hereafter, you may craft more yourself at the shrines. <laughs> I must retrieve a furnace forthwith. Pray forgive my departure. <laughs> Okay, evil repelling medicament, and yeah, he said we can craft them ourselves. I was wondering if he meant the, uh, you know, the actual pills that increase our maximum stuff, but I'm assuming not, because that sounds overpowered. 
Alrighty, uh, interesting little side quest there, and yeah, it sounds like now we can create our own um, little buffs, I guess, or whatever, which I don't really like using in games like this. I mean, if I absolutely have to, I will, but I uh, the way that I like to do it is like if I'm getting stuck on an enemy or a boss or something, you know, truly stuck. It's like I like to l just learn the mechanics. If I have to get by just flat out using damage buffs or damage reduction buffs or anything like that. I don't know. It's just like, I'd rather learn the mechanics more so. Okay, so the little thing is telling me to go that way, but I want to get back to where I was because there was like a whole bunch of other stuff we missed, right? So what happens if we go back over here? I don't really know exactly where we are. Uh, I think this way should lead back to that beginning zone so let's take that even more will thank you thank you and then what's this what is oh it's another one of these oh okay there's like a whole bunch of different types of these guys what's up little mushroom man gonna whack ya oh okay you're a little tough and i think he poisoned me as well he definitely poisoned me all right let's heal up should i use magic on this guy he's he's a little bit tough oh crap i did not see that being a swing there Okay, get him with the combo finisher. Boom. And then I'm going to give you one of these. Bada bing. All right. Anything else? I'm trying to think of cool ways to fight this guy. Like if I could do like a big jump strike or something. Without using mana. Portraits updated. Okay, I guess we should use one of those poison cures, right? I'm assuming we have one at this point. Uh, evil repelling anti-miasma. Removes poison state significantly. Increases poison resistance. Uh, it says on hand down, so I can just press down to use this, right? Down. Uh, L2. And down. Good. Okay. Yeah, obviously I will use the um, the cures for the poison and everything like that, of course. But just like the, the buffs. I don't know. I, I, I just typically find myself not going for the buffs in games like this. Where the heck? Oh, there's a shrine. Oh, okay. So, yeah, that this little... Uh, trail leads to shrines that's right i feel like i put that together before so this over here should be back to where i was going up the mountain i do believe i just want to go back here and make sure i see something i recognize which i think is this visage right here yeah all right so what have we not done i think we we did go to the end of the river right that looks like a dead end then we hop down to the frog yep okay so it looks like this is the way to go cool beads uh, what other mythological creatures? I mean, I, I don't want to be like a cyclops. I don't want to be anything ugly. I always typically go for things that are cool. You know, uh, I always say like if I was playing Pokemon, if I was a NPC type, I would always be the cool trader. I don't know what that says about me. I probably it, it's probably some psychological thing where, you know, I wasn't cool for a long time or I didn't perceive myself as cool for a long time in high school and stuff like that. Uh, and so like I, I crave that in the in this day and age, you know. To reach my two, true potential. Whatever. Some psychological thing going on there for sure. But, um... Yeah, so I don't want to be anything that I perceive as, like, weird or ugly or anything like that. Like a cyclops. You know, as cool as the strength would be and everything. It's just, like, that one eye, man. And that big kind of brutish nature. Just not really for me. So, yeah, not a cyclops. What else is there? We got, like, uh, a Hydra. I mean, that would be sick, but you'd also be a nightmare to deal with, right? You'd be some sort of horrible monster. Um, hmm. Mythological creed. Oh, a griffin. Oh, a dragon. Yeah, a griffin or dragon. Gotta dip into my D&D &D stuff. Uh, think about that. Okay, rest, done, travel, self-advance, set spells, reignite, cultivate spirits. Can we cultivate a spirit just yet? Let's see here. Uh, if we go to this guy, Wandering White, uh, Blood of the Iron Bull, three out of two, and then Will, yeah, 6,000. So we could definitely do this. Let's go for the Wandering White. Bam. Spirit cultivated. And now for the next level, we would need not avoidness and Will times 9,000. Okay. And so what level are we at? We're at four out of six. Uh, yeah, whatever a knot of voidness is. Okay, so this should deal some massive damage. Hopefully, it was worth investing into this one particularly. I don't know. Uh, reignite. I'm gonna click this just because, yeah, this is annoying having this constantly say it's new. 
Okay, cool. That's gone. Great. All right, craft weapons. Uh, did we have? We did have a new weapon, didn't we? Yeah, the wind bear staff, which needs another Yao Guai core and more will. Okay, so we'll try to get that stuff and then arbor here as well. What do we got? Ooh, ooh, we got a new one. The ebon gold silk robe. Are these all rare? Some of them are uncommon. Okay. So defense goes up by 13. Dance of the Black Wind and Cloud Step Shrouding Black Wind will attack enemies nearby. The Destined One and the Decoy continuously. What's going on with the Decoy? I guess I missed a mechanic of the Black Wind situation, huh? Okay, so this needs a whole bunch of will as well. And then we've got the Ebon Gold Arm Guard, which we can craft. And then we've got the Ebon Gold Gators as well. Well, crap. After a moment in Cloud Step considerably increases unveiling strike damage. Man, yeah, that unveiling strike is cool. Although, I, I don't know. I really like immobilize. Uh, although, I guess we could switch to all of them. It just depends on the mana usage, of course. Um, well, crap. Now we have, like, a hard situation because I kind of want to go for the bronze set because we've already started building the bronze set, haven't we? So, bronze arm guard we can make right there. Oh, and it's got a unique effect. Yeah, it's weird. Some of these uh, equipments have unique effects. Bronze brocade battle robe. So if we get two, we get some extra stuff. Yeah, so unique effect for this one. Performing light attack following Evanescence directly triggers the finisher of light attack combo. Performing a light attack... Performing light attack following Evanescence directly triggers the finisher of light attack combo. Evil Crasher deals additional damage to the enemy upon crashing their immobilization. Okay, we got to go for the bronze set. This is like, yeah, this sounds really, really good. So let's do that. And then for the bronze buskins, we need some will. And then we also need will for the ebon or for the uh, bronze brocade battle robe. Okay, very cool. Let's go to brew. Let's take a look at this. So we have a new effect here. Lamb Brew. Each ship instantly recovers 20% of maximum health for a brief moment after. Slowly recovers 25% of maximum health. I kind of like that. Lamb, wine, and fruit on a platter offered with sincere devotion. Replace, examine, sword, and return. Hmm. Each ship restores 33% of maximum health instantly. Recovers 20, so 13% less. For a brief moment after, recovers 25% of maximum health. Yeah, the Lambrew sounds better to me. I'm not sure if it actually would be or not. And then we've got a Soak. Uh, poison Resistance, meh. And then slowly recovers even more health. I mean, yeah, that sounds like a no-brainer to me personally. And then we got the store. Let's sell the tiny pieces of gold, of which we have eight. Then let's go to buy, see if there's anything else. Here. Well, well, yeah, we want silk, right? I don't think we really need anything else. Oh, there is some good stuff here. Yao Guai Core and Silk. Mind Core as well. Lick Rish. Uh, this could be used to make medicines. Okay, well, I don't think we need to buy any of that because we just got Will, right? Make medicines. Oh, this is new too. Select the mortal medicines you wish to make. All right, so we'll just take a look at what these do real quick. Uh, critical hit chance. Damage. Tiger. Yeah, that's good. Uh, grants focus. That's good. Uh, removes chilled and grants chill resistance. Removes poison. Grants poison resistance. Removes shock. Grants shock resistance. Good for that frog, obviously. Uh, removes burnt burn resistance and then damage reduction. Yeah, again, I mean, we'll just find this stuff. I don't think I actually need to make it. And then finally, we go back to craft. Already got the bronze monkey mask. Uh, we need the bronze brocade battle robe, but there was like another thing, right? We already got the bronze arm guard, but the bronze buskins is what we want here. Bam. Excellent. We'll equip that. And then what's the fourth and final perk? Upon crashing, the immobilization of the enemy massively reduces the cooldown for a mobilized spell. Oh my God. We're going to get even more overpowered as hell. Are you kidding me? Okay, bronze brocade. Uh, so we just need a bunch of will. Yeah. All right. So we definitely want to get that done because that's going to be a huge power surge. Like, my God, I, I almost feel bad. I feel like that's going to be like insanely overpowered uh, when we're able to. Yeah, because basically we cast a mobilization. We deal so much extra damage and stuff. And then on top of that, when it ends, we get a whole bunch of stuff too. Oh yeah, I needed to also look at uh, what the heck is Evanescence. 
that was somewhere I remember, but I don't know what that actually was. Where was Evanescence? It was some skill or something. Focused attack, blah, blah, blah. Oh, we got new stuff over here, too. Oh, and we've got sparks. I didn't even realize it. Okay, so what is secondary damage? Heavy attacks, the cost of focus point deals additional damage to the enemy based on their remaining health? Oh my god, we're getting like so overpowered here. That that perfectly goes with our build. Okay, pillar stance. Where's Evanescence? I remember I made the bring me to life. There. When the enemy is immobilized, the moment they attack extends the mobilization duration, massively increases the damage the enemy takes. Okay. And then what did we have that changed that? It was this, right? So, okay, so we cast a mobilize at the exact moment that they attack, and then it triggers Evanescence. Performing a light attack following Evanescence directly triggers the finisher of a light attack combo. And then in in addition to deals additional damage to the enemy upon crashing their mobilization. My god. I mean, this is just so much. This is synergy up the butt. This is crazy. Oh. Sandgate Village. Okay. Uh, don't know if I want to do that just yet because there was other stuff that we had not explored yet. Right? My god, the amount of synergy. I'm honestly astounded by how much they're giving us here. So yeah, mobilize is going to be insane. So we have to time it to when the enemy attacks. Uh, and when they do, and then if we do a light attack and we do a finisher instantly, we know that that's successful. Right? Is how that works. And then just light attacks and then trigger the uh, the pillar slam. Yeah, which will deal more damage now based on their lower how low their health is. Oh my god. I shudder to think how much damage output we're going to be dealing here. Fragrant Jade Flower. Uh, did somebody drop down? Oh, you did drop down. Okay. Hello. I'm going to give you one of these. Ah, oh, gosh. Okay. Oh, boy. These silly projectile people. Alright, let's break this guy's shield. Oh my gosh, the projectiles, man. They're really throwing me off. Nope. No, 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 no. I'm stuck on a branch or something. Okay, hold on. Ow. I, I'm like legitimately ugh, getting stuck on this stupid tree back here. It's really annoying me. Alright, I'm gonna give him one of these. Blah, blah, blam. To restore some HP as well. Holy moly. Yeah, I kind of feel like if you're going to throw this many projectile people in the game, uh, definitely give me, like, infinite staff twirling. Because so far, the amount of stamina that the staff twirling takes is, like, way too much to be able to actually utilize it, it feels like. So I feel like they honestly just need to make that kind of how they did it in Jedi Fallen Order and Survivor, where, you know, you can, you can do it for a very long time to kind of counter the... Uh, the projectile people. Okay, so we got that village. Gotta remember that. And then where does this go? I mean, it's hard to tell right now where the optional zone is. It looks like this might link back up to that village over there. And then I was seeing that and I was wondering if I could jump down there. No, but there are frog enemies. So we definitely can go below to that ravine. And then I think I saw a guy over here. Yep. Okay, let's try the uh, immobilize. I want to see how that works. Oh, okay, that should... Hmm, that did not trigger? Yeah. That did not trigger, right? Because we would have instantly done, like, a light attack finisher. The kind of jump and slam with the, uh... With the, uh... With the staff, which did not happen. Okay, so we're gonna have to time that correctly. I have to figure out how to time that correctly. Alright, that goes up to the village, right? And then where does this go? I'm trying not to miss anything, basically. Purple Linkshi. And then this goes back somewhere where we had not been either... Or does it? Yeah, because that... Okay, I was going to say, because I'm looking for that little tunnel. But it goes above the tunnel. That's why I was confused. All right, let's also drink. See how much health that restores? We should be restoring health for some time. Yep. Indeed. Looks like it restores a lot of HP. Cool. Alright, so then we come up here. Is there a guy on the roof? There sure is. Uh, no way to attack him, right? There was... Yeah, if we use that wolf... If we use that... Oh my god. Okay. And there's no way to enter? 
wait oh my god i thought that was an enemy real quick right there uh yeah if we use that wolf throwing knife thing that would probably be good um wow these guys are really annoying how do i there's literally no way to deal with them right unless i was able to like build up uh build up uh focus or whatever and then hit them okay tiny piece of gold yaogwai core cool 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 might be able to build that last piece of the equipment is there really no way to deal with these guys i mean literally nothing right immobilize no black mist step no unless it can somehow jump up to them and attack them could do the pillar strike i hate keeping enemies alive in games like this it's like a rule for me to like always you know it's like a rule for me to always like kill every enemy i come across at least once but i guess these guys get to live for today which is super duper annoying all right let's go back to the shrine and see if we can't make that final piece of that equipment we will rest or re re regenerate all the enemies and then we will go to craft uh, no we'll go to store sell and then sell these tiny pieces of gold we just got. And then we will go to craft, craft arbor. And then we will go to the bronze brocade battle robe, which we are missing 559 pieces of will. Damn. Oh, well. All right. Or should I say, oh, will. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that'll be where we end this episode here. Is this guy about to fire at me? Looks like he was putting up his crossbow. Uh, yeah, man, this immobilization, uh, three-charge pillar slam, I mean, I, yeah, I really am excited to test out how much damage we do to these guys. Just gotta remember, let me check one last time, if we go to self-advance and this and then evanescence, when the enemy is immobilized the moment they attack, wow, so you have to literally do it, yeah, that's really hard, because, like, you don't want to get hit by the attack, but it looks like this wolf, like, is literally, yeah, like literally like on the hitbox that's when you use it okay we'll try to practice that i guess all right ladies and gentlemen thanks so much for watching let me know in the comment section below what is your what would you be if you were a mythological creature let me know i guess i'll just say sagittarius or a centaur because yeah i can't really think of anything that's kind of fits me as much but thanks so much for watching check out the patreon if you'd like to support and i'll see you in the next episode bye bye